Hey Steph and all those people who are watching these um, or these other requested uh, questions that you gave me in regards to the two unit preliminary HSC course. All pretty tough questions as well so it's good to see these are the ones that you find difficult and no easy ones. Um, okay so the first one we're, we're looking at 2 over the square root of x minus 3 over x squared. Okay, now before I even look at differentiating this question, I'm going to write these without having a divide by root x and a divide by x squared. So I'm going to write them with uh, negative indices and with fractional indices. So I'm going to put 2x to the power of negative 1 over 2 minus 3x to the negative 2. Now remembering that the root x is the x to the half and the over is the negative there. Likewise, the x um, negative 2 means the negative means 1 over x squared. Okay, so now I'm going to differentiate it. So I'm going to put here d dx. Now, it's not dy dx because see how there's no y is equal to? It's just that term. So I don't need to put the dy. I just put d over dx. Um, otherwise, just put, you know, just differentiate. It doesn't really matter. Look, they're not going to be too uh, picky if you do dy dx anyway. But that's typically correct. So let's differentiate it now. Okay, so we've got the negative a half, our quick differentiation, we multiply that by the what's at the front. So 2 times negative half is negative 1, x. Now minus a half minus 1 is minus 1 and a half, or minus 3 over 2. Then I've got negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, x minus 2, take away 1 is minus 3. Okay, now... That's theoretically correct, however, because the question was given to us in third form and fraction form, we want to do that. So the negative 3 over 2 works on the x only. So I've got negative 1 on top, or negative at the front, doesn't really matter where that negative is. Okay, the negative means 1 over. I'm left with x to the power of 3 over 2. Well, the 2 on the bottom means it's a square root, and then it's x cubed. Then I've got plus 6 over, because the negative 3 only works on the x x cubed and voila that is my simplified answer okay all right the next one okay this is a, a oh, semi t oh, fairly tough question actually this one was um, what I might do I might just uh, do the first part just so we can make sure we're on the right track show the equation of the tan oh, so the normal so not the tangent the normal so y equals 3 over x at the point 1 comma 3 and we want to make x minus 3y plus 8 equals 0. Okay, so at least they tell us what it needs to be. So if we do it wrong, then we uh, can go back and see where we went wrong. Okay, now I can put dy dx because there's no, there's a y there. Now before I do that, let's actually just write that as um, 3 x to negative 1, because it's going to help us a lot easier to with our, or do with our differentiation. So negative 1 times 3 makes negative 3, x negative 2. Now there's no point putting it back into the fraction form because I'm not, I don't really care about the differentiation part of it. I actually want to find out what the value of the gradient is at that particular point. So at the point 1 or x equals 1, my dy dx or y dash or gradient is equal to negative 3 brackets 1 negative 2 that's going to equal negative 3 just put that in your calculator so we've got the gradient of but remember that's not the gradient of the normal that there is the gradient of the tangent remembering just quickly if I have a you know a little parabola so like here you know if we have a tangent okay it might look like that, touch the one point. What we're looking for is the gradient of the normal, which is perpendicular to the gradient um, of the tangent, or perpendicular to the tangent, should I say. So that means that m1 times m2 equals negative 1, or it's a negative reciprocal. So my, um, gra my gradient of the normal is going to be 1 over 3 because it's the negative reciprocal of negative 3 but if you're not sure put it into that little formula and it'll work out in itself um, okay so I've got my gradient of my normal which is the 1 third I've got my coordinate which is going to be the 0.13 so let's put into the formula the point gradient formula y minus y1 
equals m x minus x1. Now multiply it all by 3 because we want it in general form. 3y minus 9 equals 1 times x is x, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Put it all to the right hand side so then x is positive. So x minus 3y plus 9 across we get plus 8 equals 0. And thankfully we've got that right. So that is what they gave us at the beginning part. So we have shown that the equation of the normal to the curve is that amount. But that's not the question that you asked for, is it? So the question that you asked for, let's have a look. The, it says the normal meets the curve at a second point. Okay, at a second point Q, find the coordinates of Q. Now look at the little diagram, although obviously that's not the correct parabola. You can see that my normal, which goes perpendicular to the tangent, crosses through there, but it's going to hit the parabola at another spot. You can just see it hits it there. We know it already hits at that point because that's the point that it went through, the x equals 1. So we need to find that other point. So what is this question talking about? Well, this question is talking about the point of intersection. Now, what formula or what type of question do you think about when you hear point of intersection? Well, you should think of simultaneous equations. All right, we've done lots of those simultaneous equations which we already know what that one solution should be x equals 1 because that's where it cut it in that first place so we need to find the other the other point so basically we've got two equations there we've got the equation that we started with y is equal to 3 over x that's my first equation the second equation that we found was x minus 3y plus 8 equals 0. Now remember we can do this through two methods. We can do this via substitution or elimination. Now this really isn't set up for elimination. Remember where the x's are there, y's are there, and that sort of stuff. So I think substitution is probably the easiest one. Particularly it says y is equal to 3 over x. And we have y down here. So let's just substitute the 3 over x where the y is. So we get x minus 3 lots of 3 over x um, plus 8 equals 0. So all I've done, I've put the where the y was equal to 3 over x, I've just chucked that in to the second equation. Now it's still not particularly easy, okay, because it's a fairly hard equation to solve. Look, from that point forward, I mean you could do this, I guess x minus 3 times 3 is minus 9 over x plus 8 equals 0. Now we've got x on the bottom there and it's quite a nasty place to have an x. So what's the opposite of divide by x? Well times by x. I'm going to times every single thing by x. x times x makes x squared. If I times this by x they cross out and then 8 times x is 8x and then what have you formed? You formed a quadratic equation. I'm just going to rearrange that so I've got the x after the x squared and now hopefully we can solve this via factorizing. If we couldn't, then you'd use the quadratic formula. But that looks like a fairly nice one. It's going to be x plus 9, x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to negative 9 and x is equal to positive 1. Now look up there. We've already got that x equals 1. So the solution that we're looking for must be that x equals negative 9. So I'm just going to do it up here. I'll do a little box. Therefore, when x equals minus 9, put it back into the equation, y will equal 3 divided by negative 9, which is negative 1 third, and that's my coordinate. So it asked me for the coordinate of q, so q is at the point negative 9, negative 1 over 3. Okay, now that is a pretty tough question. Okay, a lot in that, um, but certainly, you know, when you see that point of intersection, the point in intersection thing, or you think about the point of intersection, then certainly you need to think about simultaneous equations. Okay, now this is a dynamite question. Okay, this is pretty tough in my view, pretty tough. So we've got the left hand side is equal to cot theta over cosec theta minus 1 minus cos theta all over 1 plus sine theta. Oh, right, I'm probably going to run out of room for this question, but we'll see how we go. Um, for this question, we're going to have fractions over fractions, and if you don't like having a fraction over a fraction, 
use the divide by symbol instead of having this over sign here. But I'm going to work with fractions over fractions. Cot theta is the same as having cos theta over sine theta. Now remember, because tan theta is sine on cos, that's the opposite of, of tan. That's going to be all over cosec theta is 1 over sine theta minus 1 minus cos theta all over 1 plus sine theta. Um, all right, so there's no point changing these things here because it's going to be a bit more challenging. I'm going to be looking at these things here, trying to change them to sines and causes, um, and then hopefully I'm going to have something to do with tan. Probably going to be like a, I reckon, maybe something like a sine theta over cos theta. That's probably what we're trying to make at some stage, or two, two sine theta over cos theta. Okay, so let's have a look at this question here at the bottom part now. We've got cos theta over sine theta all over. Now, I don't like having two things there. I like having things as one common denominator. So I'm going to use that as cos theta over sine theta all over. Now, if that's over 1, okay, I'm going to times that by sine theta times the top by sine theta. So I end up having 1 minus sine theta all over sine theta. Um, minus cos theta all over 1 plus sine theta. Well, I'm going to have to try to work on the other side now. Okay. Now, this is a fraction of a fraction, and we can simplify it. Look, if you don't like writing it like this and you, you find this so difficult, maybe it might be a good idea to write it like this. Um, cos theta over sine theta divided by, that's the big over sign, 1 minus sine theta all over um, sine theta minus cos theta over 1 plus sine theta. Okay, the reason for that, I mean, if you can do this straight away, which would be great if you can, you could realize that you know, this means divide by, so this is going to flip upside down, and then we're going to multiply it. But you can probably see it a little bit more clearly on this right-hand side in yellow. So that's going to turn into a times. So I'm going to have cos theta over sine theta times, and I'm going to flip the second fraction, sine theta over 1 minus sine theta minus cos theta over 1 plus sine theta. And I can see things already unraveling, which is a good thing. It means we're probably down the right route. Sine theta over sine theta, they cancel out. So I'm left with cos theta over 1 minus sine theta minus cos theta over 1 plus sine theta. Now, I want to have a common denominator here, and that's going to probably give me a nice um, difference of two squares when I do that. So I'm going to five times this by 1 plus sine theta and 1 plus sine theta times this by 1 minus sine theta, 1 minus sine theta. I can now put it over a nice common denominator of, um, well, I can actually just do 1 minus sine sine squared theta because see how that's a difference of two squares one minus sine theta one plus sine theta so i can just write it as one minus sine squared theta um, but the top part i can now expand out so cos theta times one is cos theta plus cos theta times sine theta is cos theta sine theta i've got a minus there cos theta times one is cos theta and then I've got minus cos times minus sine is going to be plus cos theta sine theta. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay, so I wasn't sure if this would be working out, but it certainly does. Cos theta minus cos theta disappears. I've got cos theta sine theta plus cos theta sine theta, which equals 2 cos theta sine theta all over. Now 1 minus sine squared theta, that's the same as doing cos squared theta because that's coming from our trig identity of sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And obviously if I subtract the sine squared theta over here, you can see it equals cos squared theta. And now look what's going to happen. This is going to be really nice now. 
we can have a cos on top cancels and a cos on bottom cancels. So we're left with 2 times sine theta over cos theta. And look up, remember at the top there? I said that's what we're look, probably going to be looking for. 2 sine theta over cos theta. I got it. So that's equaling to 2 times tan theta equals the right hand side. Phew! Wasn't sure if I'd get that one out. Okay, nice one. That is a really, really challenging question. Okay, um, but certainly you're getting marks there. I'm not sure if that was worth two or three marks, but you're getting marks working towards an answer. Okay, you had to pick some hard ones, didn't you? All right, so the next one, find the value of, ah, this is an easy one. Okay, thank you. That's okay. That's okay. For this one, it's a little easy, I shouldn't say it's dead easy, um, you know, but it's not particularly challenging, but I can see probably where, you, where things are going wrong. Find the values of k for which these things have real roots. Now, it doesn't ask me what the roots actually are. So it's not to do with alpha and beta. This is to do with if they're re like real, if they're one, two, or, or, or no real roots. So for real roots, it means that it has either one root or two roots, which means delta, or the discriminant, is greater than or equal to zero. Now we know the discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac. So for this question, and I probably know where most people will go wrong, and I'll explain that in a tick, well my b is the k, so it's k squared minus 4 times a is 1, and C is this whole thing here, but I'm going to put that into brackets, okay, because I'm multiplying the whole thing, that's all, that whole thing is C. Now, we know that this is the discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC, and we know that it's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, now let's simplify things. K squared minus 4 times 1 is 4, K plus 3 is greater than or equal to zero. K squared minus 4K minus 12 is greater than or equal to zero, and we've formed a quadratic equation, which we can now solve. So it's going to be probably six and two, I think. So x, so k minus six, and k plus two, is greater than or equal to zero. Now be careful here, because this is an inequality. So k doesn't equal six and negative two, but we need to test it. I often like testing it by drawing the parabola, okay? Where k is six, and k is negative 2, and it's a positive parabola, because it's a positive x squared, I'm going to simply just draw a nice little parabola there, and we're looking for what, for where it is greater than 0. So this is my 0 line, because obviously y is 0, so it means that it's that direction, because it's going up, that's greater than 0, and that direction, because it's greater than 0, so therefore k is less than or equal to negative 2, or k is greater than or equal to 6. If we were looking for less than, so no real roots, then it would be between these two things. So k would be greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 6, but it didn't ask us that. Okay, so although, I, look, I said it was an easy question, but it's certainly, it's certainly not dead easy. It's, uh, it's, it is a bit challenging, but that testing part is really crucial. Okay, and the next one, oh dear. Uh, this is a tough question. All right, this is not particularly nice. x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals a over x plus 2 plus bx plus c all over x plus 1. Okay, so you know this is going to be sort of a question. You've been used to these where you might be ax squared plus bx plus c and you have the sign, you know, it's going to be equal to. So, where do I go from here? Well, this is a tough one. I reckon probably factorizing this bottom part because that's something I can do. I can't factorize the top part. Um, so I'm going to factorize that and make it x plus 2 and x plus 1. And what tells me that's probably going to be the right direction is on the other side, we also have an x plus 2 and an x plus 1. All right. Now, let's get a common denominator on the right-hand side. All right, so I'm going to have x squared plus 1 all over x plus 2, x plus 1 equals, I'm going to times the left-hand side by x plus 1 and x plus 1, and then right-hand side by x plus 2 and x plus 2. So I'm going to have 
a times x is ax plus a times 1 is a. Um, oh, I'll go times this whole thing together, remember, so it's not just the c. So bx times x is bx squared. bx times 2 is 2bx. c times x is cx. c times 2 is 2c. All over x plus 2 and x plus 1. Okay, now this actually, funny enough, I was doing this with the year 9s the other day, something like, not this exact question obviously, but something like this, um, where let's say for example you have 5 over 6 equals x over 6 plus 3 over 6, and they say what would x equal? Well because the common there is a common denominator of over 6, then 5 would equal 2 plus 3, wouldn't it? Therefore, x is equal to 2 because, you know, we know if there's a common denominator, we simply add the tops together to make the other number. And we can sort of use the same sort of uh, focus here, I guess. Let me just pull this up a little bit. See, all the bottoms are the same here. So it simply means that x squared plus 1 will have the exactly the same value as ax plus a plus bx squared plus 2bx plus cx plus 2c, or b, it's not particularly very nice. But this starts to get in a bit more uh, of an idea when we look at those identities before, if I put that one there, where this is my x squared, I have no x, and this is my number. So my, in this case, at the moment, my a is 1, my b is 0, my c is 1. So let's work on this right-hand side and see if I can get the x squared at the front, so bx squared. I want all the x's together, so I've got ax plus 2bx plus cx, and I'm going to get the rest that left at the back end, so the a plus 2c, just make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, I've used all terms. Now let's just factorise it so it's in the form of x squared, ax squared plus bx plus c, so bx squared plus brackets a plus 2bx plus cx plus a plus 2c. Wow, this is a pretty good question. So now I can see that the b is equal to 1 because that's what's in the first part of it. So that part is quite nice. Um, the next bit, we've got a plus 2b plus, um, oh, I should, it's not 2bx, 2b, 2b plus c is equal to, well there's no x there, so it means it equals to 0. And I'm going to select that for a moment. a plus 2c will equal the c value, which is the 1. I'm going to work from there. Now, I can try to do some substitution, because I know that b is equal to 1. So a plus 2 times 1 is 2, plus c equals 0. Let's clean that up a little bit. a plus c equals negative 2. We've got over here a plus 2c equals 1. Hold on. That kind of looks like some simultaneous equations, and it certainly is. Oops, it's a long question. So, you can see here that now, if I put this underneath each other, a plus c equals minus 2, a plus 2c equals 1, we can solve these via simultaneous equations, because there are two unknowns. I might do 2 subtract 1. So a minus a is 0, 2c minus c is 1c, 1 minus minus 2 is 3. I've now found what c is equal to. So I've got b and I've got c. So I can just use this last term and say that a plus 2 times c, or 2 times 3 is 6, equals 1. So a is equal to 1, take away 6 is, is negative 5, and I've got my a value. So we've got a, b, and c. Okay, look, um, Steph, you've done really well with these types of questions. These are some great questions. They are all very, very challenging. Um, so don't be too disheartened if you find them um, a little bit challenging. Um, but certainly have a go at them because they can possibly crop up again. Um, yeah, replace a couple of times if, if it needs to be. If you're still a little bit unsure, um, email me and let me know how you go. For everyone else, guys, I hope you found these particular questions useful because they are some great questions, a good variety of questions for the HSC preliminary course. Have a great day guys um, and enjoy the rest of your weekend Steph.